Hi Virgo, welcome to your November 2017 Astro Update. It's Serena here. So Virgo, what is happening for you in November? Well, there's a real emphasis on your third house of communication. And what makes this extra significant is that the third house in the universal chart is ruled by Mercury, which is your ruler, but you are not associated with the third house. You're uh, associated with the sixth house. And that's because Gemini is also ruled by Mercury. And Gemini rules the third house. And the third house is the house of communication of all kinds. Now, in 2017, we would say probably that the internet is the number one way that we convey information. But you could also say anything related to public speaking. So speaking before an audience, teaching is a way that people convey information. I guess radio and things like that, if you're doing podcasts, but even podcasts are associated with the internet. So any kind of vlogging, blogging, you know, internet business, YouTube channel, things like that is indicated. And Jupiter has recently gone into Scorpio, which is that third house. So Jupiter is taking up residence there for a whole year. Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion. So that gives you more opportunities to do this. And I should have said also writing and even learning, especially if it's learning something that is like a certificate type where you're not having to go to school for f four years, like a university, which is actually the opposite house, the ninth house that's um, Sagittarius rules in the universal chart. That's more of the higher education, but some kind of like certification might fall into the third house. But the third house is also the house of siblings and other extended family members, or I should say, and extended family members like aunts and uncles, cousins. And so with Jupiter there, there may be some kind of reason that you are experiencing expansion through them. Perhaps you're starting a business with uh, some siblings, or maybe you're just um, reuniting. And maybe for a long time, you're scattered across the country, and now you're concentrated in one area. I mean, there are so many possibilities. The third house is also your local area. So if you take a greater interest in your town or city, and maybe you're more involved with things there, somehow that can give you a form of expansion. You expand your contacts within your area. So you have that with Jupiter, but also the sun is going to be in Scorpio for the first few weeks. So that's in the third house. And then Venus goes there on the seventh. So until the seventh, Venus is in the second house of earned income. Mars is there all month. Mars in the second house has you hustling to make that money. Perhaps you're working more than one job. Now, this is the month before the holiday season. So there may be some connection to that, or you simply have a temporary gig that's just providing you extra money. You're working longer hours. Who knows? But that can tend to bring money. When you're, when you're um, working more, there's more activity in that house. With Mars there, it only stands to reason that there would be more money. Venus rules the second house. So for that first week, and actually, if you're listening in October, this is going to be in the last half of October as well. Venus can bring money, um, maybe more money into your life because it rules that house to begin with. And so that's nice. I mean, that's a good influence as well. 
Now, on the 4th, you have a full moon in the sign of Taurus. For Virgo, Taurus is the ninth house of the higher mind. This is the kind of stuff I was talking about, the opposite of that third house. So the higher mind, the university level uh, schooling, the uh, foreign travel area, it can deal with your philosophical beliefs or your spiritual beliefs. And so full moon here can mean many things. For some people, you may be finishing up a semester of uh, courses, maybe even graduating. You know, I went back to school as a quote unquote mature adult and I graduated in December. So you may graduate in November or maybe it's coming up that you have uh, maybe finals are coming up. It's possible that some of you are having some kind of an epiphany about something that deals with the meaning of life for you. And because uh, full moons can bring awareness to whatever area is going on. Perhaps you're finishing some trip that you've been uh, taking. Maybe it's a sabbatical. But whatever is happening, it's a an expansive energy in that ninth house. Um, and then a couple of days after that, or a few days after that, Mercury goes into Sagittarius. And so for you, Sagittarius is the fourth house of home and family. Until the seventh, Mercury is in that third house again. So... Mercury is about communication. It rules that third house. You may be communicating with your siblings. I feel like for some people, there is some kind of deal with family issues. And so uh, the fourth house can be the mother, but we could just say the family of origin to be more uh, universal or, or general about it. And the thing about Sagittarius for you is that you have had Saturn in Sagittarius for the past two and a half years. November is the last month that Saturn is in Sagittarius for the full month. Come December 20th, Saturn will then move out of Sagittarius and go into Capricorn, the sign after Sagittarius. So that will affect your sixth, uh, I'm sorry, your fifth house. So for the last two and a half years, Virgo, it is possible that some of you have even had to take care of your mother or parents in general. You know, it's like, you know, possible that you had to even move back and to your hometown and, and deal with that. And with Mercury in that third house, and Jupiter there for the whole year, perhaps you were taking on that responsibility basically on your own, and now you have the assistance of other family members. So if that's the case, that can kind of ease any excessive responsibility on your part. And Mercury in that in that third house for the first week of the month is really good for clearing the air and dealing with these issues. Now, there is a new moon in that third house sector on the 18th. So you can come to new agreements with siblings and aunts and uncles and things like that. You can, maybe some of you are even uh, possibly moving. It's hard. I, th I think that they say when Saturn is in the fourth house that it sometimes is hard to move. So uh, perhaps there is some situation where you, because the third house is your local area. So perhaps you're investigating new places that could be your new neighborhoods or, you know, potential neighborhoods. 
and looking at that from that angle, planting seeds of intention of where you want to live, it's possible too that you are starting some kind of internet business, some kind of a blog, some kind of, um, any kind of online service with Jupiter there with Venus there all at the same time as that new moon. It's really, um, great energy for making that happen. And, um, so the sun goes into Sagittarius on the 21st. This is your 10th, um, this is your, well, obviously it's your fourth house. It's funny because I, when I write these things out, sometimes I, for, I erase the, um, the previous information fully. And, uh, so the sun's going in that, that, uh, domestic area on the 21st, you will have a new moon here in December, but, um, with the sun there, with Saturn there and with Sagittarius, uh, with Mercury there, you have this dynamic energy for anything involving dealing with the parents being able to solidify agreements as well as it, you might even be signing a contract with Mercury going into that fourth house. And so that's very important as well. It actually could involve something related to maybe a trust. Maybe if you are taking care of one of your parents, um, you are the one responsible for the estate. Uh, maybe you are the power of attorney. And this also, you know, they put their house in a trust and then you, you're you the steward of it, however that goes. I don't know, but that could possibly be going on for you. And the last thing I want to talk about is Neptune going direct the very next day after the sun goes into Sagittarius. So this is on November 22nd. Neptune has been transiting through the sign of Pisces. Pisces is your seventh house of committed partnership, Virgo. And you had a full moon here in September. Now, the, the, the double whammy of that is that while that, the, the exact date of that was September 6th, by the way, but while that was happening, Neptune was retrograde in this house. Neptune retrograde actually clears the fog. Neptune is connected to kind of this nebulous uh, energy that relates to what Neptune is all about. It's the ruler of Pisces. It deals with the dream state. It dreams with illusion. It dreams with uh, past lives, you know, spirituality in general, but not anything concrete. So when Neptune goes retrograde, it tends to kind of lift the veil. And that can be kind of harsh, depending on what house it is and what truth is being revealed. So in your seventh house, at the time of that full moon in September, you may have discovered or come to a realization about something related to your spouse, and that was enough to end that partnership. I'm not saying everybody had this experience, obviously, but if that was the case, now Neptune is going direct and the idealism returns. So it may not have been that a revelation that you had led to you separating and divorcing from your partner, but perhaps it puts strain on the relationship. And now you may have kind of dealt with things and you're ready to once again, see things in a more idealistic way. And so it's not about sticking your head in the sand. It's about that balance between realism and idealism. And I think they can actually go together. So um, that can actually be a wonderful 
inspiring influence for you. Well, I guess that's about it, Virgo. There's a lot going on for you. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Have a great month, Virgo. Bye.